Yan. Okay, so intay tayo ng ilang seconds. We have 86 uh, participants inside the Zoom. Medyo, I'm having trouble sharing my screen. Wait lang ha. Give me a minute. Okay, so I think we have to start even without my... Screen being shared. So, magandang gabi po. And welcome to another episode of our Alpha TV. Okay. And, uh, ayan. So, our Alpha TV entitled The Deep Truth, an introduction to deep learning and artificial intelligence. And for tonight, okay, for tonight, Ayan, okay na yung aking screen. For tonight, uh, we will be joined by a very enthusiastic person. Same nung last speaker natin na uh, he's more into, you know, professional development, continuous um, learning. And then, nagka-share kami once ng, ng stage sa speaking engagement, but we never met personally. We, we we just met then sa LinkedIn dating go eh, sa LinkedIn and we have a common person na uh, we share and uh, this guy who will share with us the introduction to deep learning and AI is part of the Asian Institute of Management's Master of Science in Data Science okay so ito yung isa sa mga uh, flagship na program na graduate program ng AIM and he is also a fellow of the Young Sustainable Impact Southeast Asia as part of the Southeast Asia Innovation Cohort for 2020. So for tonight, we will be joined by one of the persons na alam ko na makakapag-share ng, ng, ng basics about this topic. Uh, none other than Sir Roy Joseph Roberto. Magandang gabi po, Sir Roy. Hello, good evening po sa inyong lahat, lalong-lalo na sa mga taga-subaybay ng ASLEX uh, PH Academy. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank ano, no, Sir Felix Veroya for inviting me here as one of your resource speakers. And it's really an honor for me to share my knowledge uh, about uh, deep learning and artificial intelligence. So like uh, what uh, Sir Felix said, I'm currently taking up my master's degree in data science, and I really think that data science is a very important skill to learn, especially in the 21st century and in the fourth industrial revolution. So, sir, uh, I hope you can allow me to share my screen. Okay, sir. Sige pa. Okay. Can you confirm if nakikita nyo na yung ano ko, screen? Yes, sir. All right. So, hi. Good evening to everyone, uh, lalo na sa mga attendees natin ngayon. The title of my topic, uh, the, the title of my talk for today is The Deep Truth. Ayan, malalim-lalim na usapan yan. And this will be about the introduction to deep learning and AI or artificial intelligence. So, let's begin. So this seminar is about the fundamental concepts in deep learning, how basic a deep learning algorithm works, and of course, some use cases or applications and sample projects now we know it can go before. And this seminar is not about deep technical and mathematical concepts. Uh, I understand na yung iba sa inyo, zero to little knowledge about deep learning. So let's make it as high level as possible. And there will be no Python codes, no programming language, and third, no formulas and equations. So for the content of my talk uh, this evening, 
So it will be about the introduction. I'll just give you an overview, the common applications and the bas basic terms we use in deep learning. Of course, some deep learning models, uh, specifically the supervised, unsupervised, and semi-supervised learning models. And then we also have neural networks. Later, we will explain what neural networks are. Uh, so how deep learning is similar to the human brain uh, perceives an image. So bakit ba siya tinawag na neural networks? And then number four, we have the deep layers. We have the input, hidden, and output. So iyan yung mga parts or components ng neural networks. And iisa-isahin natin kung bakit mahalaga ang mga yan sa ating uh, deep learning. And then number five, optimization. Of course, uh, how are we going to optimize our parameters such as the learning rate? And then how can we come up with a good accuracy kahit konti yung data natin? And then number six, of course, use cases. I'm going to give you some examples about my past and current uh, deep learning projects. So let's begin with the introduction. Let's explore the shallow waters of deep learning. So tinatawag ngayon yung panahon natin na tsunami of data. No? According nga to a marketing intelligence company called IDC, the entire global data sphere will balloon from 50 zettabytes in 2020 this year to 100 zettabytes in 2025. Oops, hang on. So if we're going to think about it, parang in a matter of five years, 2020 ngayon, no, 50 zettabytes, matitriple siya even more after five years, and that's in 2025 already. And just to give you a context or an overview of how big one zettabyte is, pag sinabi natin one zeta, it's followed by a series of 21 zeros. So kung yung 1 million merong 6 zeros, 1 billion 9 zeros, ang 1 zeta followed by 21 zeros. So there's no need for me to emphasize kung gaano kalaki ang data na nag-generate natin today, this year in 2020, and how much more five years from now. Well, because of this data explosion, bakit nga ba dumami ng dumami yung data natin generate? And as we all know, processing this awesome amount of data is way beyond our human comprehension. I mean, a few hundred rows nga sa Excel, napakahirap nang i-analyze. How much more kung trillions and trillions of rows of data ang ating i-analyze? So, ano-ano ba yung mga dahilan kung bakit biglang merong data explosion na tinatawag tayo sa 21st century? Well, nandyan kasi yung ating increasing internet connect connectivity. So for example, in YouTube, uh, 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. So ganong kadaming videos ang na-upload sa YouTube kada minuto. On Facebook, 350 million photos ang na-upload araw-araw. So napakarami yan. And in terms of email, 320 billion daily emails in 2021. So ganyang karaming email ang isasend natin sa next year na yan, 2021. And... Fortunately, the rise of disruptive technologies like big data and artificial intelligence allow us to process millions and even trillions of rows of data and extract meaningful and actionable insights from them. Let me just put my phone on silent. So dahil napakarami na nating data ngayon, no? Ang kagandahan niyan, it enables different companies and organizations to really analyze those data and come up with inventions and breakthroughs that can really address different problems that we face in our society, in business organizations, and even in the government. So these are just some of the common applications of deep learning or artificial intelligence in general. Unang-una na dyan, ayan, Netflix. I'm sure marami sa inyo ang subscribers ng Netflix. So because of artificial intelligence, makikita natin, no, pagkapanood natin ng isang series or movie sa Netflix, merong nire-recommend yung Netflix sa atin na, ah, ito, baka gusto mo rin tong panuurin. So because of artificial intelligence and deep learning, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga tinatawag nating movie recommendation systems. So dito, after nating mapanood yung isa or based sa mga interest natin kung ano, ano yung mga pinapanood natin sa Netflix, sa YouTube, or even uh, in other uh, websites, nagkakaroon ngayon ng recommendation system. Merong algorithm na tinutukoy kung ano nga ba yung mga most likely na gusto pa nating panuorin. For example, apart from Money Heist, maybe some other uh, uh, Spanish uh, series ang i-recommend sa atin. 
And then next one is social network filtering. So because of artificial intelligence, uh, nagagawa nating i-filter yung mga unwanted materials or content from the internet. For example, if it's unsafe or harmful or obscene, like for example, if it contains pornography, we can now automatically filter those materials or content and avoid or prevent them from, you know, uh, showing up in our uh, feed, showing up in our uh, timeline, etc. Of course, meron din tayong driver uh, car, Tesla and Nissan. I think they are the pioneers in ter in terms of ano, no? um, uh, the wireless, oh, sorry, driverless car technology. So, pwede na tayong uh, mag-transport even kahit walang driver. So, ganun ka ganda ang dulot ng artificial intelligence sa ating uh, mundong ginagalawan ngayon. Another example is fraud detection. Ayan. For example, sa mga banko, may mga manluloko or yung mga hackers, because of artificial intelligence, nalalaman natin kung sino ba yung mga anomalous activities na nangyayari doon, especially yung mga outliers nating tinatawag. So outlier detection, uh, malapit siya sa fraud detection kasi tinitingnan niya kung ano ba yung mga abnormal na transaksyon na nangyayari. For example, ikaw, um, nagsha-shopping ka usually, mga 500 pesos lang ang nagagastos mo, but merong one instance na 20,000, for example, ang lumabas or ang na-deduct sa iyong credit card, then that could be a red flag for fraud. So because of artificial intelligence, automated na yung detection ng mga ganong pangyayari. Another example is drug discovery. Oops, my phone is a bit noisy. Let, wait, let me just... Uh, okay. So drug discovery, uh, because of artificial intelligence then, uh, it enables pharmaceutical companies to invent new drugs. Maybe uh, it's kind of related also to network science, but because of artificial intelligence, nalalaman natin kung ano-ano bang yung mga chemicals ang dapat pagkombine in, ano-ano bang yung mga compounds ang pwedeng i-integrate with each other so that we can form uh, new drugs that would uh, address, for example, um, COVID-19. So pwedeng through artificial intelligence, maka-imbento tayo ng vaccine that would uh, help us uh, get immune from, from the coronavirus. And then medical image processing, very helpful din ng deep learning. Like for example, pag nag analyze tayo ng mga sperm images, kung normal ba o abnormal yung sperm mo, or for example, sa mga x-ray, kung meron ka bang lung cancer or not, sa mga uh, images ng brain scan mo, kung meron ka bang brain tumor or not. So malaking tulong din ang artificial intelligence. So ang kanina pa natin binabanggit ng deep learning, so maybe it would be uh, wise for us to give like a brief definition of what deep learning is. So actually, it's under artificial intelligence. So AI is the wide-ranging topic. And then under AI, meron tayong tinatawag na machine learning. And deep learning is actually just a branch or a subset of uh, machine learning. So to define deep learning, it's a subfield of ML concerned with algorithms inspired by the structure and function of the human brain called neural networks. So kaya siya tinawag na neural networks kasi kung paano siya mag-function or yung structure niya, katulad kung paano mag-isip tayo ng mga tao. So meron siyang similarity dun sa brain uh, functions and activities and structures natin. But uh, maybe one main uh, difference of DL as compared with ML is that in machine learning, the performance plateaus at some point. So for example, uh, 98 na yung accuracy mo. Hanggang 98 na lang talaga yung accuracy mo. So kumbaga nagpa-plateau na siya, nagpa-flat na. But uh, in deep learning, uh, the performance actually scales up with more data. So the more data you have, mas accurate yung makukuha mong results. However, we should also note that in deep learning, it actually requires large amount of label data which is tedious and expensive and needs substantial computing power. So what I meant by this is, for example, uh, you want to classify whether an image is positive siya sa cancer or not. So kailangan mo ng napakaraming images ng uh, brain scans and then isa-isa mo yung lilabelan kung meron ba siyang cancer or not. And I think you can now imagine kung gano'n siya kahirap kasi manual mo siyang ililabel eh. So that's one of the limitations of deep learning. And obviously, because marami kang data na pinaprocess, kailangan mo din ng 
substantial computing power. So possibly hindi siya gumana by using just your own laptops. Sometimes uh, you need uh, services, for example, uh, from AWS, etc. So uh, in terms of uh, deep learning, meron tayong iba't ibang klase ng inputs. It could be images such as, for example, in terms of image classification problems, sa auto-tagging, and image search. Uh, if you will notice, no, sa Facebook, di ba, when you upload this photo, kahit hindi mo pa siya tinatag, automatic na natatag yung uh, mga friends mo doon. Because uh, na-train na yung model, na-learn na nung model na itong mukha na ito belongs to this friend of yours. So, iyan yung mga uh, examples ng uh, image inputs and image applications ng deep learning. Pwede rin ng sound. So for example, speech recognition, uh, papakinggan lang ng model yung boses and then i-identify niya kung kaninong boses yon. Pwede rin sa speaker identification and then music genre classification. Ito bang music na to ay rock, ito bang music na to ay pop, etc. etc. And then, pwede rin tayong mag-analyze ng text data. So for example, no, yung uh, web page na ito is in English. And then, di ba, you have the option to translate it into Spanish. So yung um, translation na yun, it's also a product of deep learning and machine learning. Tapos uh, pwede rin ito in terms of sentiment analysis. So for example, itong customer review na ito sa Lazada, ano ba yung sentiment niya? Is it positive, is it negative, or is it neutral? And then pwede rin ito sa anti-spam and then other translation like I said earlier. Now, uh, maybe uh, a better way to explain deep learning is to start with this slide. So how do babies recognize objects? So remember how we first learned to recognize objects. I mean, for example, yung mga magulang natin, they teach us what is a dog and what is a cat. And after a few encounters, we already learned the concept of a cat and a concept of a dog. And ang kagandahan, we do not need to see dog, uh, to see dog images thousands of times just for us to learn na aso ito or pusa ito. And whether it's a pug or a poodle or kung ano man siyang uri ng aso, uh, we already know na aso pa rin siya. Ibang uh, breed niya lang or ibang uh, species. And we learned that not by analyzing the dog's images pixel per pixel, di ba? But by simply selecting distinctive features that makes that dog a dog. Pag naman nakakita tayo ng aso, hindi naman natin siya ina-analyze na ganito yung balahibo niya, ganito yung kaliit-liit ang parte ng katawan niya. We only select uh, distinct features like for example, the shape of the nose, the shape of the ears, or the shape of the tail. And then from that, we already decide that this particular animal is actually a dog. Next slide. Another example is when we try to identify symbols, uh, figures, and characters. So even if they are written in different strokes, like uh, in this example, no? so kahit iba-ibang itsura ng three na yan, in our human eye or vision, alam natin na three or three yung number na yan. Uh, however, for a robot or a machine, the process is a little bit more complicated. So hindi nila kaagad-agad na-recognize yan as the number three. So how computers read images? So for example, you have a sample image. No? We all know naman na a particular image is composed of a number of pixels. And then each pixel has a corresponding value. So for, for example, yung mga dark uh, pixels, medyo mataas yung kanilang numerical value. Yung mga light pixels naman, medyo mababa ang kanilang pixel value. At yung mga white, possible na zero or close to zero yung kanilang value. So in deep learning, since kanina pa tayo uh, nagsasalita about cat photo, so let's take this uh, cat photo for example. So kumuha tayo ng dalawang uh, pixel sample from, from this photo. So one pixel here and then another pixel here. So ngayon, imagine this is your graph. This is a, an ordinary Cartesian plane. So the farther right in the x-axis means the darker the color. And the farther you go up the y-axis, it means that the pixel is also getting darker and darker. 
So, kung mapapansin natin, yung kulay uh, blue na box, medyo dark yung kanyang pixel kasi natapat siya dun sa gray color ng cat. And then yung green na box, light yung kanyang uh, pixel value because natapat siya dun sa maputing bahagi ng pusa. So, if we're going to plot it, it should probably around here. Ayan. Approximately, siguro dyan yung kanyang uh, plot. And then, let's take another cat value for a uh, cat photo for example so ayan this is pixel uh, another pixel ayan kung mapapansin niyo parehong maputi so ang kanyang plot in the graph should probably be around here approximately however when we try to analyze um, non cat photos ibig sabihin photos ng ibang hayop or ng ibang objects for example ng dog it's a non cat kaya negative yung kanyang sign so probably it's around there And then a fish should be probably around here. So my point is, if this will be the plot, kapag pinagpatuloy natin ito, magiging gento yung data distribution niya. If you're going to notice, medyo magulo. Kalat-kalat yung, uh, yung cat images uh, together with the non-cat images. So the challenge here is that it would be hard for us to put or place a decision or boundary line to separate the cat images from the non-cat images. So, hindi lang siya basta-basta linear separation. So, it takes a more sophisticated uh, means for us to separate the, the, the yellow uh, symbols from the red symbols. And, obviously, it doesn't work in a linear classifier. So, maybe... Instead of analyzing each image per pixel, katulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, a more practical way of uh, separating them is through feature selection. Instead of pixel by pixel, we're now going to look at distinct features that makes a cat a cat. So instead of looking at images granularly, we come up with certain features that make a cat distinct from other objects. Ayan. So, for example, just for demonstration, ang napili nating features ay fur, or balahibo, at saka tail or buntot. And then presumably, uh, because distinct na yung features natin, yung cat images and non-cat images, kapag renaf mo sila in the Cartesian plane, mas clear na yung kanilang separation. If you're going to notice, mas nagkumpul-kumpul na yung mga cat images represented by the yellow positive symbol Uh, with respect to the non-cat images represented by the red negative symbols. Um, in traditional uh, machine learning, no, uh, I just want to note na we usually identify the features that we want to use. Like for example, ito, nag-decide tayo na fur and tail yung gagamitin natin features, but that's in traditional machine learning. In deep learning, hahayaan natin yung algorithm or yung model natin ang mismong mamili kung ano ba yung mga features na mahahalaga so that we can perfectly classify a cat or a dog or a fish. So yes, yeah, so the message is uh, it's easier to classify objects through feature selection as compared to a pixel by pixel analysis. So now let's proceed with the different uh, deep learning models. So we have three. Uh, number one is supervised, unsupervised, and semi-supervised. So in this uh, presentation, we're going to focus on the first two. So when we say supervised, we are using labeled data to train our algorithm. It means that some data is already tagged with the correct answer. For example, image classification. Later, I will explain that uh, more in detail. And then when we say unsupervised, syempre kabalik na rin siya ng supervised, meaning it allows the model to work or learn on its own and find unknown patterns in your data. For example, a clustering. Later, we will explain also what clustering is. And then the third uh, type of deep learning model is the semi-supervised or a little bit of a combination of the first two. So here, uh, it combines a small amount of label data. So may label pa rin with a large amount of unlabeled data when training. Obviously, th this needs a domain uh, expertise for this model to work. So supervise, here are some examples now. So for example, we're trying to identify if a particular patient is um, 
has cancer or not. So for example, meron tayong mga features like patient ID, age, and gender. So in this case, pag sinabi natin supervised, meaning to say, alam na kaagad natin na itong particular patient na to, for example, patient ID 32145, that this particular patient has no cancer, meaning negative. And then, for example, patient 45671, he actually has cancer. So that's what we're talking about when we say labeled data. Alam na natin. So patient ID, age, gender, these are the, uh, the dependent variables and our target or de uh, dependent variable is actually the cancer column. Another example ng supervised uh, data is, for example, ito, image classification. So we have different photos of black genes. We have different photos of blue dresses, blue jeans, etc., etc. So here, nililabel na natin na itong mga pictures na ito, they are in the black jeans category or in the blue dress category. So what I'm trying to say is, bago pa man natin i-run yung ating artificial intelligence model, alam na kaagad natin, na-classify or na-label na kaagad natin kung alin-alin doon ang mga black jeans, red shirt, etc. So, let's go with unsupervised. I mentioned earlier about clustering. No? So, unsupervised uh, model actually allows the model to work or learn on its own and find unknown patterns in your data. So, for example, um, uh, think of mga Uniqlo fashion items. Uh, so, ilalagay mo sila sa isang table, lahat ng mga features nila. For example, kung ano yung materials, ano yung kanilang uh, genre, ano yung kanilang sizes, or color, etc., etc. And then, pag uh, pinasok mo na siya dun sa iyong deep learning model, ang result nun ay clusters. So, kunyari, if you're gonna see the graph or the visual, meron siyang kanya-kanyang group, right? There's a huge purple group, the yellow group, and then the orange group. And then, kung mapapansin natin, there are also outliers. So, ito yung mga walang kagrupo o yung mga rare cases or isolated cases as represented by the green uh, circles. So probably, for example, yung example natin is Uniqlo uh, clothing products. So probably itong orange na to, ito yung mga t-shirts. O yung mga yellow na to, ito yung mga winter clothes. Or itong mga purple uh, data points na to, ito yung tumutukoy sa mga uh, graphic shirts na merong prints ng anime. So yun yung tinatawag nating supervised. Hindi natin alam yung magiging output o resulta ng ating model. Hindi natin alam kung paano sila maggugrupo. So now, uh, let's discuss what neural networks are. So in deep learning, like we said uh, earlier, it's a subset of machine learning where artificial neural networks uh, or algorithms that are inspired by the human brain learn from large amounts of data. So in other words, this is really just learning by example. So definition natin ng neural network. Neural network is a series of algorithms that endeavors to recognize underlying relationships um, in a set of data through a process that mimics the way the human brain operates. Katulad ng sinabi natin, no, uh, usually yung mga uh, traditional computer techniques natin, they analyze images pixel by pixel. Pero itong deep learning na to, o yung neural network, talagang feature selection. Parang tayong mag-isip. So hindi siya pixel per pixel. So let's have an, ano, a review in our biology lesson in high school. So this is a neuron. So meron siyang different parts. We have the dendrites or, you know, the, the part of the neuron that takes inputs from other neurons. We also have the cell body, which generates inference from those inputs and decide what actions to take. Like for example, if nakagat ka ng aso, yung cell body mo yung mag-iisap kung ano ba yung gagawin ng katawan mo. Are you going to run? Are you going to fight the dog? Etc. And then we also have the thing called axon terminals which transmits output in the form of an electrical, electrical impulse. I think in other terms, they call it the synapse. So sinabi ko na katulad siya ng yung deep learning or yung artificial neural network, katulad siya ng brain natin, right? So here, yung input natin, kung mapapansin nyo, parang siya yung dendrite because it accepts inputs 
uh, in the form of training observations. And then yung output natin, siya yung kanyang axon terminal, the final output extracted from previous layers, such as, for example, the prediction of classes. And then meron din tayong tinatawag na hidden layers. So these are intermediate layers where the network learns complicated relationships in the data. Yung kaya siya tinatawag na deep learning, yung deep, tumutukoy lamang yun dun sa mga hidden layers nating sinasabi. Kaya siya deep because yung hidden layers na to, hindi lang siya necessarily na isa. In this example, for the purpose of simplicity, isang layer lang yung nilagay ko na hidden layer. But in reality, pwede siyang maging uh, two or more. So let's discuss what uh, these uh, deep layers are. So maybe for simplicity again, um, let's start first with a single neuron. So consider this as neuron N. Siyempre meron siyang mga input, for example, X sub 1, one of its input. And then we have another input represented by X sub 2. So these are called our network inputs. So usually meron ding mga weights ang bawat input. It can be represented by a numerical number, which later we will give a, a concrete example. Siyempre, merong output yan. So given this particular input multiplied by these weights, what will be the output of our neuron? Pero sometimes we also put another value uh, called the bias. But sometimes meron ding weight yung bias. So this is a very simple uh, neural network. In fact, it's called a perceptron kasi isang neuron lang yung ating uh, tinatalakay dito. So, given our diagram that uh, we created, no, we have the following formula now. So, output equals to the function. Ang loob ng function na to, minumultiply lang natin yung bias uh, with the weight, the inputs with their corresponding weight. So, this is the resulting formula. Actually, I lied a little bit. Sabi ko walang formula. But I assure you, this is just very basic uh, formula. So, given that formula, so for example, ito yung ating uh, neural network. So may mga values na siya. Ang bias natin, ang value niya ay positive 1. And then ang weight niya ay negative 1.5. And then we also have inputs represented by x sub 1 and x sub 2. And then their corresponding weights are just 1. And then we also have the output uh, represented by the letter y. So given the formula earlier, no direct substitution lang, ang ating final equation is y uh, tapos ang nakapaloob sa ating function ay negative 1.5 plus x sub 1 plus x sub 2. I think this is a very basic mathematics. So, actually, kaya ko dinerive yung formula for you guys is sometimes kasi, for example, when we're trying to create a neural network, meron tayong mga operations na gustong gamitin. Like for example, here, uh, end operations. So just a little review from our... Uh, philosophy or logics class, uh, ang truth table ng AND, it's only true when uh, both uh, inputs are true. The rest, zero na ang kanyang output. In this case, uh, it will only yield a value of 1 if x sub 1 and x sub 2 are both 1. So that is the truth table for the AND operation. So using the formula, is a substitute lang natin. If we're going to look at the y column, we are able to wait maybe and using the y column uh, looking at the y column we are able to replicate the output of this column the x uh, sub 1 and x sub 2 so that's our purpose here what about another operation ayan or naman tayo Again, review ng ating uh, logic and philosophy class. Pag sinabi natin or, it will uh, yield a true output if at least one of the output uh, of the input is true. So in this case, basta may isang uh, one sa ating input, one na kaagad ang kanyang resulta. So in this case, this is the resulting uh, values for our or operation. Again, substituting those values in our formula, kung makikita natin ang output column natin represented by y, again, uh, nakopya natin yung uh, value na gusto nating makuha. 
And then maybe last one example. So dito naman, uh, even simpler, we just have one input, x sub 1, with a weight of negative 2. And then for our bias, positive 1, with a weight of just 1. And then we also have the output y. So this is the resulting formula. Y equals F parentheses 1 minus 2X sub 1. So very uh, simple mathematics again. So if we're going to uh, apply it in our truth table for the not operation, again, this is very simple. Pag uh, uh, in-apply natin ng not operation uh, to X sub 1, babalik ta rin niya lang kung ano yung input natin. So if X sub 1 is 0, not X sub 1 is 1. And I'm sure... Uh, you'll know what follows. So applying uh, those values in our formula, kung mapapasin nyo yung ating third, uh, fourth column, nagaya na naman niya yung uh, output ng operation na to. So again, successful. However, merong more complex operations style, like for example, x nor or x and, na hindi kaya ng isang um, neuron lang. So for example here, Ayan, this is a more complex uh, logical operation, x nor. So kung mapapansin nyo, kahit itry nyo dyan sa bahay, we will not be able to successfully replicate the outputs using only one neuron. So ang point nitong explanation ko na to is, the more complex the operations that we need to do, mas lalalim ang ating network. So in this case, I added two more neutrons. So this now is our hidden layer. So if you can see, this is our input. Ngayon meron na tayong hidden layer as represented by n sub 1 and n sub 2. And then we also have the output layer as represented by neuron n sub 3. So we don't need to uh, go through this in detail. Pag uh, in-apply natin yung formula, if you're going to think uh, about it, nakopya na natin yung... Uh, logical output ng x nor so 1 0 0 1 so all right so now let's proceed with uh, optimization so how to make uh, our model a good learner so meron tayong tinatawag sa deep learning na learning rate so learning rate it's a hyper parameter that controls how much we want to change the model in response to the estimated error each time the model weights are updated. Kanina may mga weights tayong tinatawag, di ba? So yung learning rate, sometimes, pag nag-train uh, yung ating deep learning model, medyo mali yung weight na na-compute natin for that particular uh, input. So yung learning rate yung tinatawag natin na kung gaano ba kabilis dapat matuto yung ating uh, deep learning model, kung gaano kabagal, or kung gaano... Uh, kalaki. So here, we're choosing the learning rate. It's kind of an art. Hindi pwedeng sobrang liit because uh, the, your training process will be very long. Hindi naman pwedeng sobrang laki because baka malagpasan niya yung mga specific points na gusto mong uh, matumbok niya. Later, we will explain uh, this more. So let's see. Ayan. So to explain learning rates uh, better, for example, this is your error function. And your goal, for example, this is your, st your starting point, and this is your global minimum. Pag sinabi natin global minimum, ibig sabihin sa kabuuan ng curve mo, iyon na yung pinaka minimum. Because meron tayong mga tinatawag na local uh, minima. For example, this one, it's a minimum but hindi siya yung global. It's just a local minimum. So, for example, this is our starting point. So, what we want is to reach this global minimum. So, ngayon, yung tinatawag nating learning rate, it can be represented as a ladder, for example. And then, this ladder, you can vary its size to reach the target point with good speed and accuracy. Paano yon? For example... Ayan, magbigay tayo ng example about small learning rates. So again, this is your curve and you want to reach this global minimum. So kapag sobrang liit ng learning rate mo, ayan, so maliliit na hagdan, 
yes, it's possible na na-reach mo yung global minimum because that's your target destination, but it take you so long to reach that uh, destination point because your learning rate is sobrang liit. So when you're training your model, it can take hours and even days and weeks because you use a very small learning rate. Pero, if gusto mo na mabilis, so by intuition, you want to use a very uh, large learning rate. So let's see kung ano mangyayari. So again, this is your curve. This is your global minimum. That's your target destination. So if you use too big a ladder or too big a learning rate, it's possible naman na malagpasan mo siya. Sa sobrang laki nung uh, hagdan na ginamit mo, hindi siya sumakto dun sa global minimum. In fact, it overshoot, nilagpasan niya yung global minimum, and your uh, model will not converge. Meaning to say, it will not be able to classify or predict uh, accurately. So what I'm trying to say here is it's also a bit of an art. Sometimes you need to uh, gauge kung or balance, I think the, the better word is balance, kung masyado mo bang palalakihin yung learning rate mo or masyado mong paliliitin or tamang-tama lang. If you want uh, speed, then I suggest na medyo malaki yung learning rate mo. If you want accuracy, then maybe mas maliit muna. And good news because in order for us to optimize kung gaano dapat kalaki or gaano dapat kaliit yung learning rates natin, meron tayong tinatawag na mga optimizers optimizers in uh, deep learning. So for example, uh, one optimizer is uh, ang gagawin niya sa umpisa, malaking hagdan and then habang bumababa ka along your graph, paliit ng paliit yung learning rate niya. Ibig sabihin sa umpisa para mabilis ka agad makababa, malaki yung uh, learning rate niya and then as you approach the global minimum, Paliliitin niya ng paliliitin yung learning rate. That's why it's called gradient descent. Kasi papaliit siya ng papaliit as you approach your target destination point. Bakit siya lumiliit? Because we don't want to overshoot. Ayaw natin na lagpasan yung global uh, minimum katulad nung nangyari sa hagdan na to. So we want it to be smaller and smaller and smaller until you reach the global minimum. So this is... Uh, a very nice visualization uh, on comparing our uh, different optimizers. So if you can see, ayan, yung, sa, yung iba sa kanila, for example, uh, we have SGD, we have Mentum, we have NAG. Uh, these are just, you don't need to know this uh, at, at this point. Uh, these are just uh, the different kinds of optimizers that I explained earlier. And some of them are fast to converge. Some of them are very slow to converge. So you just really need to strike the right balance of which optimizer to use, depending on your uh, specific use case or uh, deep learning problem. So again, deep learning is an art and we just have to strike the right balance between speed, accuracy, and computing power requirements. So, ngayon, nabanggit natin kanina, no, we're dealing with big data, meaning to say, uh, meaning to say um, trillions of rows of uh, data. Pero what if we're dealing with images, for example, um, uh, brain scan images? Okay. Meron lang nag-chat? Alright. So for example, ang, ang ating problema is classify natin whether an image or brain scan has cancer or has no cancer. So obviously, hindi naman tayo makakapag-come up ng 1 billion images for brain scans, right? So sometimes sa isang hospital, meron lang tayong 100 images or swerte na tayo kapag 500 images. So ano ang gagawin natin? Kapag kukonti lang yung data set natin, kapag kukonti lang yung photos of brain scans available in that particular hospital, uh, thank goodness we have the thing so-called as data augmentation technique. So what do we mean by uh, data or image augmentation? So uh, image augmentation is a very powerful technique in deep learning used to artificially create variations in existing images to expand an, an existing image data set. So this creates new and different images from the existing image data that represents a comprehensive set of possible images. 
So, ang ibig lang sabihin nito, for example, you have this photo of a brain scan. So, you can do the following. So, you can flip the image, you can rotate, you can shear, you can crop, zoom in or zoom out, and then you can also change the uh, brightness and contrast levels para lang dinadaya natin yung computer na. Para dumami lang yung images natin, medyo tinatabangi natin ng konti, medyo iniiba natin yung uh, color niya, etc., etc. So, in a sense, if meron tayong 100 images lang, for example, by doing uh, these data augmentation techniques, we can come up with maybe 500 uh, images more. So, in short, mas marami na tayong data for our deep learning model. And like what I said earlier, the more data that we have, the more accurate and better our performance uh, will be in terms of our deep learning model. So here are uh, a more visual example of how to do data augmentation. So kung mapapansin nyo, this is a photo of, uh, of an animal. I'm not sure if it's a, a rat or a different species. Pero ayan, iniba, iniba niya lang. Oh. Merong uh, iniba ng kulay, iniba ng angle, ni rotate, shinier, meaning to say uh, yung kanyang rotation, iniba-iba lang. And with this kind of technique, we are able to create new data sets for our model. So, pag sinabi nating deep learning, maaaring masabi nyo na it's an AI black box. In fact, pag, sina pag sinabi nating black box, para siyang uh, black magic. I mean, no one can really explain how your model or your algorithm came up with a particular uh, decision. For example, in terms of uh, uh, credit scoring, so nangutang ka sa banko, and then yung uh, profile mo, yung demographic mo, inanalyze nung ating AI algorithm, and then bigla na lang sinabi sa na, sorry, hindi kita pwedeng pautangin because you are more likely to default. Ibig sabihin, baka hindi mo siya bayaran in the future. But it's a very sensitive operation because it involves finance. So kailangan, it's really important na we are able to explain kung bakit ba ganun yung naging resulta ng ating deep learning model. And good thing, now we now have this uh, state-of-the-art technology in order for us to at least somehow explain why our model is giving out a specific output. So actually, it's called SHAP. So uh, ang SHAP na to, we can imagine this as, for example, we have hammers A, B, and C, and then we have this error log. So SHAP uh, actually answers the question, if hammers A, B, and C buried an error log, log about 20 inches to the ground, what is the contribution of each feature? So for example, Meron kang, do, balik tayo dun sa ating uh, credit score example na na-reject ka. And then you have this uh, certain demographic. For example, your uh, monthly salary, your gender, your location. This technology called SHAP will tell you kung ano ba yung pinaka-ma-influensyang feature doon uh, in terms of predicting the outcome of your credit score. Pwedeng uh, because of SHAP, malaman natin na, ah, yung uh, monthly salary mo pala, yung uh, top predictor, uh, para masabi na ikaw ba ay magde-default dun sa loan or mababayaran mo yung loan. So, in other words, this called SHAP, S-H-A-P, gives us uh, the explainability component of our model. So, kasi ayaw natin ng AI black box. Pag sinabi nating black box, walang nakakapag-explain yan. And it's really scary, especially when we're dealing with highly sensitive um, transactions, like, for example, in terms of finance or in terms of... Uh, uh, judicial analytics. So again, another visual representation. Sinasabi din ng SHAP kung positive ba or negative im yung impact ng feature mo dun sa iyong prediction. So for example, uh, habang tumataas ba yung salary mo, lalong tumataas ang chance mo na ma-approve yung loan mo, etc. Et so again, Again, uh, since we're running out of time, maybe I'm going to proceed with uh, showing you our use cases. These are my past and current uh, deep learning projects. So the first one, this is for my individual project. 
it's really interesting. It's a sperm morphology classifier, meaning to say it classifies the head of the sperm if it's normal or tapered. So I got 100 plus images. Take nota, isang daang images lang of uh, sperm uh, headshots from the human sperm head morphology uh, contributed by Fariba Shaker in Mendeley. And then once I uh, trained the model using these images, kung mapapansin nyo, ito yung kanyang output. Oh. So this is just a locally hosted uh, web application. If you're going to see, once you uploaded a particular uh, sperm image, then the machine will output this prediction. Ayon sa machine, itong image na in-upload ko na to is 64% chance na normal and 35% chance na tapered. So if you're a doctor or uh, a health uh, professional, this kind of a model or algorithm will help you decide, will help you decide if this particular sperm headshot is normal or tapered. So ganun lang naman yung uh, benefits ng deep learning. It's not trying to replace our health workers. It's just uh, trying to augment our skills and help us uh, come up with more informed decisions in terms of uh, identifying or classifying whether your particular sperm image is normal or tapered or abnormal in other words. So here in this project, I, like I said, I use 100 plus, uh, plus images and then I use convolutional neural networks. It's just a type of neural network uh, that is superior in image classification problems. And then ang ginamit kong optimizer is the RMS prop or the root mean square propagation. You don't need to know this right now. All I want you to understand is you can actually optimize your accuracy or the performance of your model by this uh, kind of optimizer. So meron din tayong other grade, meron din tayong tinatawag na stochastic gradient descent. So there are many varieties of uh, uh, deep learning optimizers that you can choose from. Again, it's an art and it's up to you really kung paano mo siya ibabalanse. And then, uh, I think this project no, uh, yields 92% accuracy. So it's pretty good in terms of classifying normal and tapered uh, sperm headshots. Pero just a word of warning, kaya mataas ang accuracy nito because it's just a binary class uh, classification. Meaning to say, dalawa lang yung pinagpa, pinagpipili anong model. Kung normal ba yung uh, sperm mo or tapered. But when you're um, having a multi-class classification, uh, expect na mas mababa yung accuracy. But then again, with uh, some level of hyperparameter tuning, with some level of optimization, you will still be able to get high accuracy. So my next uh, project that I want to share with you is a plant disease classification. Ito na yung sinasabi ko na multi-class uh, problem. So here, we're dealing with um, different kinds of plant diseases. If I'm not mistaken, um, uh, 24 yata, 24 types of plant diseases. So imagine na kanina, either normal or tapered lang, but here, it's a multi-class problem. 24 na yung pinagpipilian ng model mo. And then, here, mas maraming images yung uh, ginamit natin. It's 4,522 labeled leaf images. So imagine kung gaano katidius, kung gaano kalaborious yung trabaho nito. 4,500 images ang ililabel mo manually. Kung anong klaseng disease or plant disease yung particular uh, photo na iyon. And then here, um, we use the Adam optimizer, a five-layer uh, neural network. Katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, no? uh, sometimes when you're dealing with uh, complex problems, kailangan mas lumalim yung neural network nyo. So here, um, ang hidden layers namin ay three. Kasi one layer for the input, three layers for your um, hidden layers, and then one layer for your output. So five-layer CNN or five-layer convolutional neural network. And then good news is uh, we got 97.7 accuracy, so it's still pretty good. Uh, I'm not surprised na mataas talaga yung accuracy because uh, convolutional neural networks, they are really superior in image classification problems. So here, it's accurate even for images with low resolution. So kahit maliit lang yung aming uh, image uh, data sets, Kahit hindi, um, 
hindi iPhone yung pinangkuha dun sa mga pictures, uh, nare-recognize pa rin siya nung ating uh, uh, artificial intelligence deep or deep learning model. And then only one second prediction time with uh, just five trials. So this is also very fast, almost real time. Uh, once na na-upload mo na yung image, in a matter of uh, seconds, in fact, one second nga, na-classify na kaagad nung model mo kung anong plant disease mayroon itong image na ito. So, there are a lot of benefits of deep learning, but sometimes, no, if it falls, uh, in the, if it falls in the wrong hand, uh, it could lead to dangerous and fatal consequences. So we also need to promote a responsible AI. Like for example, uh, if you're familiar with deep fakes, it's the use of uh, deep learning uh, models to mimic a video or to manipulate a, a particular video of a high ranking politician to spread uh, fake news and misinformation and sometimes terrorism. If you're going to recall of, or if you're familiar about it, uh, merong speech si, President, uh, si former U.S. President Barack Obama and they used deep learning models to manipulate that video para palabasin ba na meron siyang sinabi na against a particular politician or against a, a particular country and the consequences can just be so disastrous. It can lead to terrorism, it can lead to wars between those countries. So imagine kung meron tayong mga benefits, advantages ng deep learning models and artificial intelligence, kapag hindi natin ito ginamit sa tama, it can lead to fatal and deadly consequences as well. So maybe to summarize my talk uh, for, for this particular evening, so in a nutshell, so the data we generate will continue to increase. I increase pa yan ng, lalaki pa yan ng lalaki throughout the years. And... Um, more data enab enables mankind to automate mundane and repetitive tasks. So huwag tayong matakot. Kadalasan pag sinasabi nating artificial intelligence, oh no, it, it could have been a robots taking charge of humanity, replacing humans, uh, taking our jobs away from us. But the role of data or artificial intelligence specifically is just to augment. To augment our skills so that yung mga paulit-ulit na task like for example, um, encoding, etc., etc., ma-automate na yon, so we can focus more on uh, task or, how do you say, deliverables or projects that involve critical thinking, creativity, etc. And I want you to remember that deep learning, specifically convolutional neural networks, it's always superior in image classification problems as compared to the traditional machine learning uh, techniques. And then, but then it's an art, so we have to balance accuracy with speed, explainability, and computing power. It's like saying, sobrang accurate nga nung model mo, pero it takes, what, two months or several weeks naman before it can spit an output. So wala rin. Or maybe super accurate and bilis nga ng model mo, hindi mo naman ma-explain kung bakit naging ganon yung kanyang classification or output. Or, um... And dami mo ang data, but you know, your company pala has just limited uh, computing power. So you just really need to strike the right balance between these uh, parameters. And then what's the next? Of course, it can be optimized by tuning hyperparameters such as the learning rate. Yan yung unexplained ko kanina. We can also apply data augmentation techniques kung konti lang yung available data natin. We can twist, rotate, and change the image property so that we can have a more varied uh, data set. And then, also note that deep learning is both science and art. Paulit-ulit ko itong sinasabi, and there is no one correct way of approaching a particular problem. And lastly, deep learning is a very powerful tool to augment human skills, but it can also be a dangerous weapon if not used with caution. So we have to be worry about the ethical uh, concerns that might arise when we're trying to develop or implement a deep learning model and solution. So that's uh, my talk for this evening. Thank you so much for uh, staying with me. I'm Roy Joseph Roberto. I'm from the Master of Science in Data Science program of the Asian Institute of Management. So if you have uh, questions or if you want to collaborate with me, 
uh, feel free to send me an email. Here's my school email, triple R, tatlong R yan, uh, roberto at aim.edu. Or if you can send me an email uh, at royjosephroberto at yahoo.com. You can also add me on Facebook. My account is public. You just uh, search Roy Joseph Roberto. So I think that's it. So if you have questions, let me just uh, check the group chat. I think we have a couple of questions. Hi, Sir Roy. This is Jojo, your technical committee for Asking Speech Academy. So, for the, for tonight, I uh, would like to thank you very much for that very wonderful topic you have discussed for us, which is a deep learning and AI. Now, so uh, now, now the floor is open for your questions, Sir. I'll uh, I'll think I'll moderate the questions from YouTube and from Zoom. So, it, first question here is from Sir Adrian Segovia. Uh, he says that I'm interested in conducting a research in the field of computational neuroscience for my MA in clinical psychology. What kind of deep learning model is the best to use in understanding or classifying psychological disorders using EEG data? Um, I'm not a domain expert in uh, psychological disorders or clinical psychology. By EEG, do you mean the, the scans of the brain images like the MRI? Can you confirm that? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Well, like again. what I said, one of the applications of, of deep learning is actually the analysis of um, medical images. So if you can collect uh, data or images or photos of brain scans, for example, uh, I, I imagine, for example, in neuroscience, when you're trying to... Um, implement a behavioral trigger, like for example, pain or uh, whatnot, merong a, a specific part ng brain natin yung trigger or magla-light up. And I would assume that it's visible in the, in the image, in the EEG image. So um, by collecting these kind of uh, data, you can actually label them. Like for example, if this particular image uh, is related to like um, a trigger, in our visual cortex or a trigger in our um, audiovisual cortex, then you can you can uh, you can think of some insights or what kind of uh, particular problems that you can have uh, with those data sets. Again, uh, um, all I can say here is that, uh, for example, deep learning convolutional neural networks they are superior in image classification problems. But then again the problem should come from our domain experts. I'm not a domain expert in that field, but if you can think of um, a, a specific use case that can uh, be classified in terms of images, uh, then I think uh, uh, convolutional neural networks are really a great uh, deep learning model to use uh, pag meron kang kinaklasify na image, whether binary class or multi-class. Okay, thank you for that wonderful answer, sir. Roy, now we have a question from the chat box from Sir Jovin Castillo. Uh, deep learning is data hungry and in order to improve the accuracy of your model, training data must be as voluminous as possible. Can you suggest any trick on how to get as many training data as possible without using data augmentation? For example, is image classification or classif classifying plant types, how can we get thousands of images on herbal plants more efficiently? Well, there are two suggestions I have in mind. Number one, you need to implement a more aggressive data collection system. Like for example, uh, I assume in farmlands, for example, you need to employ hundreds of farmers who can collect data for you, but that would be very expensive and tedious operationally. Another thing is you can try scraping data from the internet. Sometimes there, there are available uh, uh, data sources, open data sets for you to, to try and download, or you can also scrape uh, websites or uh, Google uh, image search. But then again, mahirap siya because uh, of the variability in data. Kasi hindi naman siya pare -pareho. Like for example, yung, yung lighting ng ibang uh, image ay ganito, yung lighting ng iba uh, kinuha sa, during the night, yung iba kinuha during the day. So it will really affect the, the performance of your model. So 
Uh, sa image classification problem na na-encounter ko, if, uh, if, if your use case or problem is not very complex, I'm okay naman siya even like, like in the sperm image uh, classification, I just use 100. Isang daan lang. 100 images of sperms. And then I introduced some data augmentation techniques and then I got an accuracy of 92%. So, hindi naman kailangan palagi na making 100% yung accuracy mo. Sometimes, it really have to make sense for the business. What if the business just needs an accuracy of 92% or maybe 80% is good enough for the business? Then you don't really need to reach an accuracy of 100%. So, uh, long story short, you can only collect data so much, but of course, it will cost your company a lot. Uh, for example, lalo na kapag manual mong kukunin yung mga images ng plant diseases sa mga kabukiran, it's going to be tedious and expensive at the same time. Okay, so that's a wonderful uh, answer. No? So, parang you're, you're talking about how can you get a, a, a high accuracy with limited images or limited data. So we have some questions from YouTube. So from Sir Alvin John Paz. So good evening, I am Alvin. I'm an IIT student. I should uh, like to ask if deep learning AI can recognize and predict a weather to image in real time. If gagawin siyang feature sa isang feature ng flood system. I'm, I'm sorry, pardon? Sir, the question from YouTube is, uh, can we use the deep learning AI to to recognize and predict the, the real time weather using image? If this feature can also be used also in flood system. Using images? I'm not quite sure if meron ng technology na ganyan, but for example, yung um, picture ng skies, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it's possible as long as you can label this, uh, these images. For example, kapag ganito yung cloud natin, then this is probably the weather. Kapag ganito yung lighting, alam ba, masyadong mainit, then you should be able to properly label those images. Ganun lang naman yun eh. Uh, these class image classification problems, as long as you can properly label the data, then it, 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 it is possible that uh, your idea can work. But uh, just a, a word of warning, sometimes kasi meron tayong mga simple problems na hindi naman kailangan ng advanced uh, data science or artificial intelligence uh, technique. Sometimes a simple uh, regression, a simple classification, or you know, hindi, yung hindi masyadong uh, sophisticated techniques is enough for us to predict the weather. Sometimes uh, traditional machine learning techniques mm. are enough to predict the weather for you. But if, if you want to use images, definitely you need lots of images, labeled images. Kasi katulad nga nung sinabi ko kanina, iyon yung limitation ng deep learning. Yes, it's superior in image classification, but it would require you thousands and hundreds of labeled images kung uh, kinakailangan. Okay. So maybe we can use an... Uh, another tool to predict a weather such as uh, temperature and humidity. No? So, for us to be able to predict. So, uh, there are questions here. Can you please give some applications of deep learning in staffing industry or company? Um, yes, this is a very controversial topic because kapag ginamit mo ang deep learning, which I said is like an AI black box in recruitment, in human mm -hmm. resources, uh, it can raise some ethical issues. Like for example, pag itong particular applicant na to ay nireject ng iyong artificial intelligence model, you need to be able to explain kung bakit mo siya na nireject. Eh, meron kasing mga cases na uh, nare-reject tayo just because of yung model natin or yung artificial intelligence model natin. Na-train na kapag itong applicant na to ay galing sa ganitong school, then he or she is more likely to be hired. So, yun yung mga iniiwasan natin. Because, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Kapag yung model natin, eh, hindi natin natanggal yung ating mga uh, deeply embedded biases. Kasi tao lang din naman yung nagsusulat ng mga models na yan. It could be systematized. Those biases that we have could be systemic. And malaking impact niyan sa human resources or recruitment system. So, again, uh, of course, AI or deep learning can automate or help you 
uh, recruit faster. Like for example, sa, sa first stage ng recruitment process, uh, by simply analyzing their CVs or resumes, mm-hmm. meron doon mga specific fields na i-analyze ka. And then the machine will just tell you na, okay, these candidates will go to the second round. Yung mga ganong tipo. But then again, you have to uh, take it with a grain of salt. Hindi pwedeng uh, basta mo nilang susundin yung model mo. Maybe in, in the first uh, few days of the implementation, kailangan masigasig na na monitor ng mga domain experts, sp- especially in staffing or recruitment and, and human resources, to make sure that the model is not biased, that the model is not uh, discriminatory of applicants uh, regarding race, sex, uh, religion, etc. Okay. Thank you for that, sir. So from YouTube question from Sir Alan Jaiko Arshaga. Good evening. What are the minimum requirements or specs of computer to be able to run this AI? Um, it depends on your data set or the complexity of your problem. Like for example, when you're just running uh, hundreds uh, of data of images, uh, kahit laptop lang ng ano ba yung ano nito? Mine is Core i3 8th generation. So hindi naman siya ganun kalaki. Pag maliit lang yung data mo, of course, uh, sometimes an, an ordinary commercial laptop will do. But, you know, in the Asian Institute of Management, we have this uh, supercomputer called Joji and it runs Joji. 500 teraflops. So napaka uh, bilis at napakalaki ng kanyang computing power. So when we're dealing with big data, you know, yung mga trillions of rows of data, Uh, of course, kailangan na natin ng higher computing power. But uh, if you're just, you know, using data sets from, from Kaggle, for example, which are relatively uh, small, then your your own laptop should uh, probably do the job. Okay. Maybe for those domains are focused for databases and and some and some requires big uh big memory you know so you need you need those kinds of computer anyway sir this are this this question is from a medical tech can this technology achieve teranos didn't achieve in the field of med tech pardon can this technology achieve teranos didn't achieve in the in the field of medical technology uh, apologies i'm not aware of teranos but thank you for your question okay So next question, can we use deep learning in retail industry? Again, yes. Uh, for example, in your in predicting supply and demand, in uh, uh, optimizing your distribution chains, merong mga use cases yan ngayon. Eh. Yung mga malalaking companies, uh, they want to predict the supply and demand. Mm-hmm. Gusto nilang ipredict kung alin yung mga underserved and um, overserved areas. For example, uh, sa distribution ng gamot, or medicines. Um, alin ba yung mga areas in the Philippines that are overserved? Baka napakadaming supplies or inventory doon. Baka napakaraming pharmaceutical stores na nandoon. So we want to optimize our distribution process. We want to optimize our supply chain so that uh, hindi na sasayang. Kumbaga na-optimize natin yung distribution. Hindi lang basta-basta na in this particular barangay ang dami na palang supplies ng medicine, ang dami na palang supplies ng gamot. So we don't want that to happen. But then again, uh, uh, just a word of warning, sometimes hindi naman siya kailangan ng deep learning. Sometimes a traditional machine learning models will do or w- will do the trick. Okay, to add also, no, so I have read some article about uh, they used a CCTV inside the grocery store to predict which of the goods will be consumed faster. So they monitor the traffic area of, of the people there. So uh, it uses also a deep learning. No? So part of it will be used in the retail. So your question here is... Uh, Sergio, Sergio. Ah, yes, add, ko lang now because, add ko lang because uh, you mentioned CCTVs. Yes. Uh, in China right now, uh, ginagamit din nila yung mga CCTVs to monitor their citizens. And for them, it's legal. But you know, from from a global perspective... Mm. Uh, napakalaking ethical data privacy because, yeah data security and privacy na so sometimes we have to also strike the right balance no yes mm-hmm. uh, it can help you in terms of uh, governance or in monitoring your people or in monitoring terrorist activities but yeah. baka yung liberty ng individual citizens mo na sa sacrifice na because of those uh, actually 
Actually, Pasig right now is using AI. Drones. So, yes, the drones, the CCTV to to see what areas are are um uh, which which areas has more population or which areas has more dense in terms of population. Lalo na ngayon kapag COVID-19, no? So they can see so madali makapag-contact tracing kapag madali makikita yung mga tao. I, I'm not privy to to the to the Pasig ano no. To Pasig drones mm. yeah. paano yun na ipasa pero dapat bago yun maipasa dapat uh, sinabihan yung mga tao because they have the right to informed consent dapat alam yeah. nila na ah, merong mga babiyahing drones dito and then it will collect data yun naman ang mahalaga eh. kailangan uh, pinagkakatiwalaan ng publiko kailangan palagi yung publiko dun sa mga deep learning models or artificial intelligence systems na dinedeploy natin because Uh, if not, if walang consent or hindi sila na-inform kung ano yung mga data na i-collect nitong drones na to at kung saan gagamitin, then again, it's an ethical uh, concern for for the developers of that model. Yes. So I think the the app right now of of the ICT which is called staysafe.ph, it uses the GPS of those people who will download the app and then to predict which areas are at risk for for covid so is it, is it safe to go to this place or to that place so those are some uh, i think applications of of deep learning and, and ai so and we, we still have questions from youtube sir roy and one of them is um okay nasagot na pala to and so any more questions from our team zoom and sorry to from miss aryan k magalona Is there a relationship or a connection between RPA and deep learning AI? Can you tell me what RPA is? RPA sir, is for uh, robotic process automation and and deep learning AI. Ah, all right. So yes, there's a relation but there's a very distinct difference because in RPA you have to sequentially code what the robotic uh, system will do. It's a sequence of code, but in deep learning, it's you're actually allowing the algorithm or the machine to choose the features for you. So here, hindi explicit yung programming natin. I think that's even the literal or dictionary definition or difference between yeah. RPA and deep learning. Eh. Uh, hindi explicit yung pagkaka-program sa deep learning. Sa RPA, explicit pagkakasunod-sunod yan eh. So it's like, uh, you know, automating uh, what do you call this uh, for example if if you have this particular document merong mga predefined fields and then yung rpa system natin kukunin yung mga fields na yun and then i isasalpak sa isang form for example maybe that's an example of rpa i'm not an expert in rpa mm-hmm. but in deep learning uh, the programming is less uh, explicit Okay, so it's like structured versus semi-structured data, right? Yeah. So, sir, is it possible that deep learning can recognize whether an image is manipulated or not? Yes, katulad nung nabanggit ko kanina, deep learning is being used to manipulate images, like for example, to create fake videos. Siyempre, ang tatalo lang doon is another deep learning model to yes. detect those uh those manipulated uh, images. Like for example, yung mga unang versions ng deep fakes, uh, sa mouth region lang yung manipulated. So mm. all the rest of the video, na-retain yung integrity. Sa mouth region lang yung manipulated. So, uh, I think the US has invented uh, a more sophisticated deep learning model to detect if merong uh, parang synthetic doon sa video na yun, na kapag yung mouth lang yung Uh, bumubuka o yung gumagalaw o yung namamanipulate. So, again, ano lang yan eh, uh, parang it's a race. So, this particular problem or deep fake uh, model will be countered by just a newer or more advanced deep learning uh, model. So, unahan lang kung sino yung mas advanced, hmm. siya yung mananalo. Maybe they can decipher who, who reached the moon first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of like that. Okay. So what else? We still have questions here. So from from Sir Sani Mendoza, uh, Mendova. Hi, Sir Roy. This is Sani Mendova. Is AI deep learning used in geofencing? Thank you. 
GU fencing, wow. A lot of technical terms. Uh, maybe for, for that one, I can just get back because I'm not familiar with uh, GU fencing. More of like a GPS structured uh, data, I guess. I guess. Ah, uh, okay. Um, puede, pero it might uh, undergo more steps. Like for example, uh, if you're talking about geospatial data, yeah. so meron munang some level of geospatial analytics na gagawin. And then from from the data that you will gather from from your map uh, or from your geospatial uh, information, then you can predict something. Like for example, uh, by using what do you call this? Voronoi. It's a it's a technical mm. physics term, but essentially you're just trying to uh, get the reach. For example, if you're if it's a marketing problem or if it's a supply supply chain and logistics problem, you're just trying to predict kung gaano yung reach nung nung particular store mo or yung particular distribution channel mo. So, yes, merong mga use cases na ginaga, gumagamit ng geospatial data and then kinocombine nila to a uh, machine learning model. Oh, yes, perfect example is um, the damage map of Tacloban. So, ang ginawa namin, we, we first gathered the geospatial data of Tacloban. Kung alin dun yung mga damage maps, kung alin dun yung mga uh, maps or areas na risk sa flooding, for example, or sa storm surge, etc., etc. And then once we got those data, we analyzed the road network of Tacloban so that we can optimize kung saan ba dapat ilagay yung mga evacuation center or kung aling mga roads yung most robust na kahit, for example, nagiba or binaha itong particular area na to ng Tacloban, itong mga roads na to, madadaanan pa din uh, ng ating mga rescuers at makakapagdala pa rin sila ng mga saklolo doon sa mga nasalanta ng bagyo. So it's a combination of uh, geospatial analysis uh, and network science as well. Okay, thank you for that, Sir Roy. So I guess all answer uh, all questions have been answered. So uh, wala nang tanong. So we are closing the in a platform already. So, in behalf of Ask Lex Page Academy, Sir Roy, maraming maraming salamat po for uh, pagpapaunlock ng aming invitation for for this uh, webinar. No? So, uh, you have a very great uh, one hour of sharing your thoughts and knowledge about deep learning and AI. So, yun po, maraming salamat po, Sir Roy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Joe and Sir Felix. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you so much. Lalo na sa ating mga uh, participants uh, this evening. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, so uh, wait lang yung mga participants. I'll be having some short announcements, so don't go yet. Uh, we'll be announcing some the link for your e-certificate for tonight. So, so for you to be able to have a certificate, so kindly fill out the attendance form in the link that we will be providing you. Only those both with Zoom link and attendance details will be given an e-certificate. So attendance link will close after one hour. So for that, kindly like Aspect Speech Academy and subscribe to our button and to our YouTube. Yeah, so let's subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. So training updates. So we still have 10 slots more for our uh, online Lean Six Sigma Yellow Bell program running from June 6 to June 27. So it is a 16 hours coursework, exercise, quizzes, live classes, and simulated project plus your certification. So kindly send us a PM for the last 10 slots. No? So again, also, we'll be having our wave number two of green online green belt. So last 15 slots for our green belt. So it is a 40 hours coursework, exercises, quizzes, live classes. This is, this is the great deal for Asplex. Unlimited project coaching hours, okay? So... Uh, yeah, this is a recorded uh, session on YouTube, so can you access our YouTube channel? So the online green belt will be launched from June 6 to July 7, so from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And 
For our next program related to this, actually, it's a certification for data analyst program. So in this program, you'll be, you'll be taught how to use R in terms of data management, visualization, statistics, operation analytics, and we'll have a case study plus exam. So you'll be, you'll be given seven certificates for you uh, when you finish this class. So it's uh, from June 1 to July 17. 7 to 9 p.m. So it's a combination of, of self-paced coursework, live classes also. So kindly grab your slots now. Last 10 slots for our uh, very first Alpha Certified Data Analyst Program. Now, uh, let's continue to be significantly better. So watch out for the next, uh, for the next webinar. So I think wala pang but our next webinar would be on Thursday. So watch out for our... Ito pala yan. So our next webinar is the basics of operational analytics. So by Ms. Corina Mercado. So it's an Agile Sigma coach, strategy analytics, optimization manager, and consultant. So upon receiving your certificate, we'll be providing also you with, a, uh, you with this Zoom link. Okay. So now for your certificate, so kindly access the link below. Okay. So the attendance link will close after one hour. So kindly write your name and kindly evaluate the training right now. So you for you to be able to have our e-certificate. So team YouTube, team Zoom, maraming maraming salamat po for watching. So, so do, you, do you have any questions? Uh, okay, so wala nang tanong. Yeah, you can screenshot. Okay, you can screenshot. I here's the link. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Here's the link of, of our of our YouTube. I of our attendance. Sorry. Okay, so kung wala na kayong tanong, maraming maraming salamat po for, for keeping us uh, significantly better. Okay, so no more questions. Maraming salamat po. So see you next time.